This is Nate Carl with Landmark Implement. Today I'll be going over the basic AMS functions and setup on the 70 series combines uh, utilizing both the 2630 display in combination with uh, the command setter armrest monitor. So some of the functions will be set up on the armrest whereas the others will be up on the 2630. For now I'll go ahead and start with all of the settings down on the command center armrest, and then we'll transition up to the 2630 display. Um, starting here on our main home page, this isn't a touch screen, so we have to use the soft buttons at the top of the screen to select the corresponding buttons below each one. Here, the first home page uh, is our basic combine information. Uh, it will show us where our combine is set. Uh, of course, we can always reach over here on our armrest on the side to make any adjustments to those settings by pushing that corresponding button and then using the scroll wheel um, to increase or decrease those setting numbers. If I push this hard key button in the upper left, I can cycle through our second home page. Any of these readings that are in here are going to be uh, customizable. We can use our scroll wheel again to move the cursor down to select the item that we want to view, hit the check mark, and then use our scroll wheel again to pick through the different items of the list depending on what we want to see in that information box. Once you find the item that you want to see, press the green check mark, that'll pick that item and then display it in that box. So we just have a couple basic home in, home page, uh, home pages set up with information that uh, of course, you can see the basic information in, on the combine as you go through the field. Our next tab over here uh, will have a few different pages of harvest information to be displayed. Um, some of the, the farm field and crop information, this will look a little bit differently um, in this scenario where we'll have a 2630 in the cab as well. Um, all this information will be pulled over on the 2630, so we won't see that. However, we can see some of those totals still on this screen. The next tab over here at the top, and we'll push on the combine. Um, this is where we'll see some of our uh, preset defaults for each crop type. Um, so if we get into a scenario that we want to record a, uh, or we have a certain adjustments that we like for that setting, um, we can go ahead and click on that box um, and either select some of these default numbers or scroll down and we can give those settings a, a new name uh, to be saved so we don't have to remember where we had it set. Kind of as those starting points as we go through uh, different varieties or as a good starting point to come back to each season. As we cycle here through to the next page, uh, this will be our crop type. Um, again, we have some of our our uh, preset defaults in here. Some of this will be pulled from the 2630 monitor, um, like our farm and field information. Here at Cornhead, this information will also be pulled from a 2630. So uh, depending on what you have set up in the cab, we'll see some of that uh, transition over from the 2630 setup. In this setting here, uh, we, we would recommend that you turn on your uh, high moisture alarm setting. That way, uh, if you get into an area, um, you don't have some, some wet grain or it's um, above what you want to be taken back to the bin or, or to haul in. So of course you can turn that on and then select those percentages. Down here in the bottom, um, we would typically have this set in a moisture correction um, based on what we took as a sample. Uh, you can make those adjustments in here if you find that your readings are off slightly from your moisture sensor in the combine. If you do get in a scenario where that moisture sensor fails and you want to keep running for a short period of time, um, you're better off changing this to a fixed moisture reading. That way you're able to continue to run um, and get finished up for the day until you get a new moisture sensor. Um, since this will greatly affect the accuracy of the yield information that comes across the display. And then as we cycle here to the last page, uh, we just see our Harvest Smart mode settings in here. If we were to come in and turn on Harvest Smart, then we would see those options enabled. The last tab up here at the top is going to be our diagnostics. 
we'll have a couple pages of uh, many active alarms that have come up on the combine. Or if we go into the second page, this is where we'll have our calibrations displayed. And the biggest thing we want to make sure uh, we do in here, um, we'll have a number of calibrations that we'll want to start each season off with. Uh, mainly anytime we're hooking and unhooking the header, we want to make sure we redo that calibration. We want to make sure that we redo our um, moisture sensor and uh, put any offsets we have in there like we just spoke about. And then our yield calibrations can also be done on this screen. So as we're dialing uh, those loads in to have a, a better, more accurate reading come across the display, um, those calibrations will be done in here. So now we'll, we'll go back to the home page and then we'll transition over to the 2630 display where we'll have the rest of these combine functions um, and make some of the adjustments in there. Now we'll transition over to our 2630 display and continue our setup from over here. We'll start with the menu button in the lower right hand corner and then select GS3 from the menu. From here we wanna ensure that we completely fill out everything underneath the resources, the equipment, and the documentation. Starting with resources, we want to have our client farm field, our tasks changed over to harvest. If you're utilizing this display in multiple machines, like a planter or another tractor, uh, we could have a different task in there. So we wanna ensure that this is switched back over to harvest and that we've also selected the correct crop season. From there, we'll transition to the equipment tab. And here, we'll go ahead and ensure that we have the right machine model and machine name selected. And then come in to our change offsets and go out and physically measure the machine, ensure that all these measurements are correct. Sometimes the default numbers are off slightly, so we wanna ensure with the tape measure that these are completely on. Below you'll see the description with the corresponding letter of exactly where they want you to measure from along with the picture icon uh, up here in the top. Uh, this is extremely important for mapping and all the information coming in on your display. Um, if we see any marks on the map with long red streaks towards the end of the field, it's typically because something wasn't measured up properly. The next tab at the top here is our header tab. Again, this should have our proper model and implement name in there. We'll come into our change offsets for the measurements, again, ensuring that everything is measured up properly. And then we can confirm our header information down here in the bottom uh, with our number of rows and track spacing, um, as well as ensuring that overlap control is turned on uh, this might be turned off in a scenario uh, where we're starting in on a field and maybe there's a well road that has no previous coverage on it. From there, with overlap control turned off, we can turn off those sections to not record anything since there's nothing coming in the combine from that area, which would greatly throw off our yield information. And once we're done in that area, we wanna ensure that we move that back out and re-enable our overlap control uh, for good yield accuracy. The next tab, tab down is our document tab. From here, we wanna make sure that we only have two tabs open at the top, one harvest tab and one that will be new. This new tab will always be displayed at the top. If we have any other tabs, again, from planting or tillage or another task that we were documenting, it's not gonna allow us to record any information. So we wanna ensure that this is completely filled out. So from here, we'll put in um, the crop that we're harvesting, variety, um, anything with that asterisk is required information. We don't have to have a brand, but you can if you wanna document that. This is also where we will come in to turn on our variety locator. If you've gone ahead and pre-set up uh, the variety mapping files in Operation Center ahead of time to load to your display. Um, this will go ahead and map those different areas as well as 
break those totals out. The next setting down will give you an audible tone as you transition into each area. And then if you want to document what you're doing for uh, residue management, you can select that on this page as well. The load information displayed below that, um, if you would like to track your loads and destination, you'll have to fill those out. Once these are filled out, it will give you the option to check the auto increment load number. Now what this will do is every time you unload um, and turn on your unloading auger, it's going to cycle to the next load and transition on from there. The other reason this would have to be filled out is if you're wanting to see those totals displayed underneath the totals tab. Um, if you do not have your load set up and you do not have these names um, filled out completely, you will not see those under the totals page. With that being said, I'll go ahead and transition to the totals tab. Under the totals tab, um, you'll see your basic harvest information displayed in here. And up here in the upper left with the swooping arrows, you can cycle between those load totals we just talked about and the overall field totals. From this, you can also pick custom filters if you wanna break down any seasonal information and go back to review. From there, we'll transition up to the mapping tab. Most growers would like to see um, typically either moisture or yield information displayed in the background as they transition and harvest through the field. So the first thing we'll do is come down here to our map settings. And from the foreground drop down, we need to select either that moisture or wet yield. Hitting the accept button, we'll go back and then we'll want to ensure that we set up our scale and our legend over here on the side. If I hit this button down at the bottom, we can see that transition to either our coverage or overlap. In this area, if we push on it, we can adjust our high and low points um, for that given legend. The next tab that we'll talk about is a guidance tab. From here, if we go into our guidance settings, if we're running row sense, we do have to enable that. By default, it will be off. We'll enable that by coming into our row sense settings, and then using the swooping arrows to enable that system. Once that system has been enabled, if we go back to our guidance view, we'll have our status box show up for our row guidance. This will change colors depending on uh, the current state that the row guidance system is in. 